Hello all. This is a case of epiglottic cyst for which endoscopic excision was done under GA and I am Dr. Ashwin VG, consultant ENT surgeon at KG ENT Care Center and assistant professor of ENT at Stanley Medical College, Chennai. This is an intraoperative endoscopic view. A well-defined cystic lesion can be visualized which is indicated by the dot sign it is arising from the right lateral margin of the epiglottis, which is marked by the asterisk sign. There are three types of laryngeal cysts as per Asherson's classification, namely the ductal cysts, the saccular cysts, and the thyroid cartilage foraminal cysts, of which the most common are the ductal cysts, which arise from the obstruction of the common collecting duct of the salivary glands and is most commonly seen in the valicula and the epiglottis. In this case, the patient is under general anesthesia with a flexometallic tube. Patient is in supine position with the neck mildly extended with the head flexed and the lesion is visualized with a 70 degree endoscope. It is a nice cystic lobulated swelling arising from the right lateral margin of the epiglottis. You can see the base of tongue, the epiglottis and the cystic lesion. It was in fact extending to the right AE fold and occupying the right piriform fossa. The patient in fact presented with foreign body sensation in the throat as a major symptom. Initially an endoscopic dissection and excision of mass was planned. A lesion was held with the grasping forceps and it was the base was cauterized using an endoscopic bipolar forceps and slowly dissected off the lateral margin of the epiglottis. That is an endoscopic bipolar which is uh, used for transnasal endoscopic procedures. An attempt is made to create a plane between the cyst and the lateral margin of the epiglottis. However, during dissection, the cyst broke down and the cystic contents got extruded. Now, in this situation, I change over to a uh, endolaryngeal debrider blade. It's a very effective tool in that it sucks the secretions or the contents of the cystic cavity and at the same time it can remove the cystic wall in entirety. It is otherwise called as a skimmer. It can be seen how neatly it removes the walls of the cyst. We should make sure that every bit of the cystic wall has to be removed in order to ensure that there is no recurrence in future. The extruded cystic contents can stimulate an inflammatory response leading to laryngeal edema which can cause a difficult extubation and it is advisable to request the anesthetist to give injectable steroids at this stage. The cyst wall is completely removed it can be seen that the right lateral margin of the epiglottis has been reached. In fact, I was able to feel the epiglottic cartilage at this stage and I stop at that point. I also ensure that the remnants of the cyst wall attached to the base of the tongue are removed. You should ensure that every bit of the cyst wall should be removed in order to prevent recurrence. The right arytenoid can be visualized behind the epiglottis at this point. Now I ensure that there is perfect hemostasis. I use the endoscopic bipolar to coagulate the bleeding points on the epiglottis and the base of tongue. Now there is complete hemostasis of the region. I'm suctioning out all the secretions at this point. Another useful maneuver is to keep an adrenaline soaked gauze pack at the operated site. It serves two purposes. 
one is it helps to attain hemostasis the other is it helps to reduce the edema at the operator site thereby reducing the problem of laryngeal edema and difficult extubation in the post operative period you can see the gauze pack packed over the site and after 5 minutes it's being removed with complete hemostasis you can see the epiglottis the arytenoid the base of tongue all in a single picture and that would mark the end of the procedure thank you all for watching